I haven't heard her voice. I don't know what she alive. I don't know what she did. Who knows? I believe the people who domicile at that house right there. That'd be Brittany. I believe, yes, and family. Hey guys, I'm Leah Nicole. If you're new, welcome. So we have another case, a 19 year old girl that went to Detroit during Thanksgiving break to see a friend that she thought she can trust, but ended up disappearing. Now, unfortunately, her case is still unsolved. They gonna find you, catch you sleeping. Ooh, stay Jasmine Moody was a 19 year old girl from Texas and her mom Lisa Nichols and stepfather Patrick stated that growing up Jasmine was a social butterfly and very popular in school. She always had a smile on her face and was always kind to others. When she graduated high school in 2014, she received an academic scholarship to attend Texas Women's University to become a nurse. During her first semester of college, her freshman year was going great. She was a part of the ROTC and dance team and she was very active on campus and always had good grades. And since she was away from home, she always made sure to call her mom. They had a very close relationship, so she always kept her mom updated about her life and what was going on at school. Now, when Thanksgiving break approached, Jasmine made sure she told her mom that she was going to spend the holidays with one of her friends this time for Thanksgiving. Her friend was Brittany Gurley, who actually lived in Detroit. Now, Brittany and Jasmine known each other for about two years. They actually met on Twitter, which is a social media app, and they started to develop a friendship that turned into a romantic one over time. But Jasmine's mother, Lisa, wasn't aware that it was more than a platonic relationship. She thought that they were just friends. And even though Jasmine and her mom had a tight mother and daughter relationship, there were some things that Jasmine didn't tell her mom. So Jasmine traveled to Detroit to see Brittany twice before. So during Thanksgiving break, Jasmine told her mom that she was going to Detroit to stay there for 11 days and leave on December 5th. Lisa told Jasmine that she didn't feel comfortable with her going this time and that she should just come home for the holidays. But Jasmine was like, you know what, mom, you're overreacting. I'll be fine. I'll let you know how things go when I get there. But the last thing anyone was thinking was that Jasmine will be in danger. So after class, Jasmine went to the airport to catch her flight and booked a plane ticket to come back home to Texas. She still had school to attend. So on November 25th, Jasmine was in Detroit ready to see Brittany and Lisa spoke with Jasmine when she arrived in Detroit and Jasmine told her mom hey I'm fine I'll keep you posted while I'm here and Lisa was able to speak with her daughter a few times when she actually arrived at Brittany's house. So during Jasmine's stay in Detroit, there's barely information out there about what she was doing or how she was feeling while being with Brittany. But on December 4th, on a Thursday, Jasmine and Brittany got into a big argument regarding a post Brittany made on her Facebook. The argument was very heated, but there's no information on what Jasmine actually saw on Facebook and Brittany eventually deleted it. But it had Jasmine over the edge to the point Jasmine stormed out of the house and left Brittany.
Now, Lisa was trying to get in contact with Jasmine since November 20th, but wasn't able to reach her. Now, Jasmine's um, cell phone kept going straight to voicemail. So deep inside, as a mom, she knew something was wrong. Like I said, they talked all the time. So Lisa contacted Brittany right away to figure out where was Jasmine. You know, she hadn't spoke to her for a whole week. And what made things very suspicious suspicious to Lisa was the fact that Brittany never even reached out to Lisa to let her know you know hey Jasmine left the house she never came back I haven't seen her so Lisa was like hey Brittany you know I've been trying to reach Jasmine and because Brittany was acting so nonchalant Lisa is like you know what let me go ahead and talk to your mother so Brittany was like, well, my mom is not home. I'll have her call you. And she hung up the phone immediately. So Lisa felt very uneasy about what was going on. So she called Brittany multiple times after that phone call every day, but Brittany would not pick up the phone. So after several attempts, Lisa was able to speak with Brittany and her mother. Now when she spoke with them, they told her what happened and that Jasmine got in a fight with Brittany and Jasmine left the house. Now Brittany expressed that she tried to run after Jasmine, but when she went outside, Jasmine was gone. She also told Lisa that the reason why she didn't call her about Jasmine was because she was so upset about Jasmine leaving. But she also told Lisa that she can track Jasmine's phone and it says that Jasmine is staying four or five houses down from Lisa. So Lisa is like, what? Like that doesn't, that doesn't even sound right. Like why would she be at another person's house and not my house or even let me know she was back in Texas. That doesn't make any sense. So Lisa now at this point is complaining to Brittany's mother about why no one was able to reach out to her about Jasmine's whereabouts and she's extremely worried. So Brittany's mom, she's like, well, she was sick with ammonia, so she don't know what happened. But when Brittany spoke with Lisa, she told her that her mother wasn't home at all. So at this point, Lisa was getting upset and she's like, okay, you know, someone is lying, you know, about where where Jasmine is, where is my daughter? So after that phone conversation, that was the last time Lisa ever spoke with Brittany and her mother about Jasmine's whereabouts. Lisa decided to contact Detroit Police Department that her daughter was missing and told them where Jasmine was staying and that she feels like something happened to her. So when detectives got to Brittany's house, they wanted to search the home right away, but Brittany and her mom declined. So investigators received a search warrant and was finally able to look around the house to, you know, get some clues to maybe see if Jasmine was there. And throughout the search, they felt like something was wrong. When they questioned Brittany and her mom, their statements didn't really make sense at all. They didn't understand why Jasmine would leave the house in a state she didn't know much about and then disappeared. And the sketchy thing about all of this is the fact they found all of Jasmine's belongings at the house, including her phone and tablet. So when Brittany told Lisa that she was able to track Jasmine's phone and how she was a few houses down from her, that was a bold face lie. So when Lisa found out that Jasmine things were still at Brittany's house, especially her phone, she knew something bad happened. So when Lisa found out that Jasmine things were still at Brittany's house, especially her phone, she knew something bad happened because Jasmine always had her phone. But investigators couldn't really do much on their end because there was nothing at Brittany's house that indicated they did something to Jasmine besides her things being there. 
investigators checked around in neighborhoods, they checked hospitals, local jails, but there was still no signs of Jasmine. So detectives kind of backed off on the case and this really frustrated Lisa because she knew Jasmine would have called her to let her know, you know, to come get her or if she was in any type of trouble at Brittany's house. She honestly felt like Brittany and her mom was lying about the events leading up to Jasmine's uh, disappearing and that something happened to Jasmine at their house and they were trying to cover it up. Now Jasmine's family felt like detectives could have been more hands-on and really pressed Brittany and her mom for some answers considering that was the last place Jasmine was at. Over time investigators never reached out to the family to keep them updated regarding the case nor did they ever return Lisa's phone calls. Lisa also shared that investigators failed to insert Jasmine's information correctly in the FBI National Crime Information Center. Detectives felt like you know there was no evidence that a crime was committed nor did Brittany and her mom have anything to do with Jasmine's disappearance. They stated that Jasmine's case will only be considered a crime if she was kidnapped or you know was murdered but they felt like she was an adult and left at her own will. They needed evidence to confirm if a crime was ever committed. So a few weeks after Jasmine disappeared Brittany didn't talk much to the police, but on a news interview, she shared that her and her mother was cooperating with police in that she took a polygraph test. But the results was never shared to the public and police never shared with, you know, Lisa if they ever made Brittany even take a test. So we don't know how truthful that was and if they did, I would think police would share the results with Lisa and her family. Eventually, Lisa decided to hire a private investigator to find some answers, but it looked like, you know, there was no new solid evidence with Jasmine's case. So of course that left Lisa kind of feeling hopeless. You know, we had a 19 year old, you know, college student that went missing during Thanksgiving break and the media barely covered it. So after one year in 2015, Lisa and, you know, family and friends decided to take a 17 hour bus ride to Detroit to look for Jasmine and do a huge search party. They passed Passed out flyers, put pictures of Jasmine around the community where you know she was last seen. And after this event, this is when Crime Stoppers reached out to Lisa to help bring awareness for um, Jasmine's case. And after this event, Brittany made another statement. She said, quote, she didn't know anything about Jasmine's whereabouts. And when she first went missing, she tried looking for her and quote, I thought she went for a walk and I went outside to light a cigarette and I came back home, but Jasmine didn't. And when Brittany was asked if she thought Jasmine was alive, she said, quote, in my heart, I know she's okay. She's out doing what she wants to do. I think honestly, the reason why she left was that she was running from something that had nothing to do with me. So after Brittany's statement, I kind of feel like her statement was a bit heartless and insensitive. I feel like her saying she's probably out doing what she wants to do is a little weird to me because no one has heard from her since she left your house. And I'm sure she would love to be with her mom and her family. I mean, she had a lot going for herself. She was in school for nursing. She was focused, you know, on bettering herself. She got good grades. She was in the ROTC program. She was into dance. I mean, she was busy. So for her to kind of just throw that all away and run away, it doesn't make any sense, especially if she was in a state where she barely knew anyone but you. So I don't know. I feel like Brittany and her mom, they know something. So I don't know, just my own theory. I feel like 
maybe Jasmine never left the house. I feel like maybe they had an argument regarding that Facebook post. I'm just throwing my theories out there. Like I'm kind of thinking Brittany probably did like you know maybe a flirtatious Facebook post and that got Jasmine upset. They got into an argument and maybe a fight happened you know something like that like I don't know but it's just kind of weird or I was also thinking just my own theory I was also thinking that maybe um Jasmine was sex trafficked like I don't want to put that in the air but I don't know it made me think about another case I did um the Zion Foster case if y'all seen that live um and I don't know if there's any updates with that case but um, as of right now, like I'm feeling like maybe Jasmine trusted Brittany and Brittany had Jasmine travel all the way up there to Detroit and maybe Jasmine got in contact with the wrong people and maybe, you know, something like that happened. Like, I don't know. I was just thinking about a whole bunch of theories in my own head while I was researching this case because I can't understand how somebody just disappears like that unless you hit a body or somebody kidnapped her like it's either or I feel like I don't I really don't feel in my spirit that she would just pick up herself and leave especially because Brittany and her mother was lying about everything down to the phone down to you know her going out trying to find her and you know just covering up covering up a lot of things down to the mother probably even lying that she was sick because I feel like if Lisa was calling out multiple times why didn't y'all pick up the phone because I know as a mother if I had somebody's child staying with me and she went missing I'm gonna I'm gonna freak out I'm gonna be like oh my goodness Brittany where is your friend you need to call her mother right now you need to let her know that her daughter is missing like I will be distraught as well because that child was under you know my roof I am responsible even though jasmine was of age i would i would still feel like i'm responsible for my daughter's friends if they go missing or something happens to her so i don't know it's just weird so i'm praying and hoping that jasmine's family you know lisa they receive justice for her case it's been a year and i don't i haven't heard her voice i don't know was she alive? I don't know what she did. So what is the relationship between Jasmine and Brittany? What kind of relationship? Um, sexual relationship. Um, I don't know about sexual. And the relationship may not make a difference other than the last person to see Jasmine was Brittany. Why would Brittany say something like that? Because um, she's illusional. Do you think Brittany had anything to do with Jasmine's disappearance? Of course. In what way? Because how would she just walk out in the cold? No shoes, no phone, no nothing. Now we tried to have a real interview with Brittany or her mother, but no. Someone knows. Who knows? I believe the people who domicile at that house right there. That'd be Brittany? I believe, yes, and family. What do you think happened to your daughter? <sighs> That's the big question. That's the big question I'm wanting to know. Detectives do feel like foul play was involved, but they have no leading evidence as to what really happened. And her parents are still looking for her. You know, they do know that it's a possibility she might not be alive, but they really just want to know the truth about what happened to Jasmine. So guys, you know, as of right now, before I close the case, let's go ahead and pray for um, Jasmine's family because I know it's still tough to go through this, to not know what happened to your daughter, to not know what happened to your loved one. And as of 2022, this case is still unsolved. It's it's barely any active, you know, investigation going on. So let's go ahead and pray for her family. Father God, we come together and we pray for Jasmine's family, her mom, her father, 
her um, family and friends, Lord. We just ask you to reveal the truth. You know all things. You know all the things that go on in the dark, Lord God. I pray that you convict Brittany and her mother, Father, Lord God, to come out and just tell the truth, Lord. And I'm also praying for a protection over um, Lisa and her family, Lord God. And I'm also praying that um, this year or the year after, Lord, new evidence come out with this case, God. In Jesus' name, we pray. We're praying for peace and comfort and healing. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Thank you guys so much for tuning into this case. Don't forget to share it. Don't forget to bring awareness to these cases. And I'll see you guys in the next video. They gonna find you, catch you sleeping. Ooh, ooh, ooh. stay woke, baby creep.